and welcome to the Q3 and 9 months FI23 earnings conference call hosted by Ambar Enterprises India Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Jasbir Singh, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer. Thank you and over to you, sir. Hello and good morning, everyone. On the call, I am joined by Mr. Daljeet Singh, Managing Director, Mr. Sudhir Goel, our CFO, Mr. Sachin Gupta, CEO of RAC and CAC Division, and SDA, our Investor Relations Advisors. We have uploaded our result presentation on the exchanges and I hope everybody had an opportunity to go through the same. I hope that you all must be aware that Umber was a pure roommate play when it got listed in January 2018 with revenue base of around 2100 crores and finished good RAC contributing significantly in its revenues. During these four years, out of which two being COVID years, Umber has successfully diversified into four business verticals, namely room AC and components, electronics, mobility applications, and motors. I am glad to inform you that all four cylinders are firing well and are on growth, strong growth trajectory. Today at a higher base of revenue, finished good RAC contribution has substantially come down at consolidated revenue. I would now brief you about each business vertical division-wise performance, including its highlight and financial performance. Room AC and Components Division. In 2022 calendar year, Room AC industry witnessed a change in the manufacturing landscape, wherein some of the big brands shifted their strategy from outsourcing of RAC to in-house AC assembly with varied level of backward integration in order to take benefits from the PLI scheme. This change in strategy of brands of in-house assembly of AC increased the requirement of components manufacturers and Umber is one of the most preferred choice of customers for providing component solution with its Pan India presence in vicinity to customers. We at Umber anticipated this shift in the industry and therefore scaled up our capabilities for components manufacturing which includes facilities like Chennai, in Supa, Pune, Sri City area, and Pantanagar. Our components business grew by 109% in quarter 3 FY23 from Rs. 545 crores in Q3 FY22 to Rs. 1137 crores in Q3 FY23. Share of ROC in total consolidated revenue is going down with increasing share of components and we expect the trend to remain so in near future. Our strategy going forward is to maintain share of 26 to 28% in the manufacturing footprint of room AC industry. Apart from room AC and its components, this division is also gradually gaining its presence in other segments such as components for refrigerators, washing machines, microwave ovens, water purifiers, and fans. At industry level, room AC industry in Q3 witnessed a muted quarter. For October and November 22 witnessed lowest sales and we saw demand picking up from mid-December 22 onwards. We expect the summer of 2023 to be buoyant with a strong summer driving pent-up demand. We are bullish about good summer which begins at the end of February and lasts till the end of June. In long term, the Indian AC market is expected to grow at a double digit CAGR. The industry will continue to focus on a new innovative health and environment, environment friendly products. Changing lifestyle along with increased affordability will fuel market growth. As far as financial performance of this division is concerned, RAC and components for nine months FY23, revenue stood at 2,822 crores versus 1,587 in nine months FY22, representing a growth of 78%. And 
As far as quarter three FY23 is concerned, it's clocked the revenue of 1025 crore versus 685 crore in Q3 FY22, a 50% growth. The growth is fueled by a strong order book, new customer addition, and expansion in newer geographies like Chennai, Three City, Supa, in Pune, and Pakistan areas. Component division includes this division actually includes number PR and Pravartika also. And now take you to our electronic division highlights, which includes Elgin and Ever. This division has successfully entered into two new verticals, which are variable and variable and telecommunications. We have been able to onboard marquee customers in these two new verticals, and so we expect a growth of more than 50% in this division in FY24. Electronic division revenue for nine months FY23 stood at rupees 710 crores versus 371 crores in nine months FY22, a growth of 91%. Operating EBITDA margin for nine months FY23 stood at 4.2% versus 3.2% in nine months FY22. We are also expanding the manufacturing footprint of electronic division with new facility in South India. Commercial production of Elgin Chennai commenced in December 22 and expect to add four new customers in Elgin Chennai plant. It has started with one large customer right now and we expect that four new customers will be added in FY24 in Elgin South India. As far as mobility application division, which includes Sidwal, the revenues for nine months FY23 stood at 310 crores versus 206 crores in nine months FY22, with operating EBITDA growth of 49% on year-on-year -year basis for nine months FY23. Government thrust on modernization of railway is providing positive traction for this division. In fact, we have gained orders for Vande Bharat Express and new RRTS, which is going to be Delhi Merit, new category of trains, which are going to be launched very soon. In Indian Railways business, this division added new pantry business as a new product category to increase our wallet share within existing customers. Apart from railways, all other segments of this mobility division, such as metros, defense, precision air conditioning for telecom, and bus air conditioners are on our growth path. Order book for this segment stands strong at more than 700 crores. As far as motor division is concerned, it is rapidly growing, and for nine months FY23, revenues for this division stood at 202 crores versus 156 crores in nine months FY22, representing a growth of 30%. Operating EBITDA margin for nine months FY23 stood at 12.8% versus 10.2% in nine months of 22. We have also received BLDC motor approvals from few customers and further few are in process. The strong order book with new product addition and geographical expansion gives us visibility of more than 30% growth for FY23 and FY24, sorry. Motor division is gradually gaining confidence with export customers and expect its export business to grow by 30 to 40% in FY24. I will now take you through the consolidated financial highlights. On the revenue base, for nine months FY23, the revenue stood at 3,924 crores versus 2,270 in nine months FY22, marking a growth of 73%. For the quarter Q3 FY23, Revenue stood at 1,348 crores versus 975 crores, a growth of 38%. On operating EBITDA for nine months FY23, operating EBITDA stood at 271 crores versus 163 crores in nine months FY22, a growth of 67%. For Q3 FY23, operating EBITDA stood at 89 crores versus 74 crores in Q3 FY22. Operating margins, EBITDA margins for nine months FY23 and Q3 FY22 
2022 stood at 6.9% and 6.6% respectively. Q3 FY23 and Q3 FY22 operating data is before impact of e-shop expense and other non-operating income and expenses. On finance cost and depreciation, finance cost and depreciation increased to rupees 29 crores and rupees 36 crores as compared to 12 crores and 27 crores in quarter 3 FY22 respectively. The increase in finance cost and depreciation is is largely due to capex, capex incurred during the period and increased interest rates. With the thrust on building domestic manufacturing capabilities through PLI schemes for promotion of domestic manufacturing of air conditioners and phased manufacturing programs, the industry expects not to be dependent in the coming years on the vagaries of foreign supply chains and dollar fluctuations that affect prices and operating margins. Thank you everyone for joining on the call. With this, I shall open for the Q&A session. Thank you, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Participants are requested to also restrict your questions to two per participant. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have the first question from the line of Dhananjay Bagrodia from ASK Investment. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Hello. Hi, good morning. Uh, hi, sir. Wanted to ask you how, how many units of room AC would have been sold in Q3 uh, this year, and versus how much would be last year? Well, we are we have stopped giving the volumes for the room air conditioners because the strategy is now value-based proposition uh, in the complete manufacturing footprint point of view. And uh, in past, we saw uh, that this business vol this volume uh, was picked up by our customers and uh, it was treated as a very uh, you know tool to negotiate further so this has become a company sensitive information and we will not be able to provide you any further information so, on this any break up between room ac and room ac components room ac and room ac components yes in uh, in 9 months if you see uh, out of total 2822 crores of 1137 crore in the components. Sure. And uh, so your capex for your capex spread for 400 crores, what would that spread be between? Uh, please uh, say that again. For your capex of 400 crores, what would the spread be between which divisions? No, no, no. Our capex will uh, is not 400 crores. In fact, because of the strategical shift of brands going in-house, uh, we took a very aggressive stand for from the long-term perspective and we increased our capex by putting up uh, four new facilities in this uh, this year and the capex will be beyond 600 crores, uh, close to about 625 to 650 crores. Uh, this is because we have not only brought in a green tea facility in Sri City, uh, plus we have added uh, uh, three new plants in Chennai, Tamil Nadu, which was not anticipated earlier. Uh, that is for components of heat exchangers, injection molding machines, uh, for copper tubings, uh, electronics, PCBAs, and cross-flow fans, and compressor parts for refrigerators. So all these new additions have been from the aggressive point of view, and that's why the capex uh, will stand about to be in tune of 625 to 650 crores range. And so last question. Um, Mr. Bagrodi, I would request you kindly come in the queue for follow-up questions. Okay, sure. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Dhruv Jain from Ambed Capital. Please go ahead. 
thanks for the, taking my question sir sir i had a question on the stand alone gross margin so we've seen a very sharp decline there so if you could just point out you know what's the reason for that uh, and how should we think about this going forward so the stand alone the margin is hit in the percentage terms it is hit by uh, because of our new facilities which have been uh, onboarded within this year due to the expenses uh, which has come up from uh, uh, quarter 1 onwards you will see uh, it improving because uh, now the all the new plants have started commercial production but i was talking about the contribution margin specifically is it because uh, we are doing a lot more components in the stand alone business so there are <clears throat> three things which have got added one is uh, components of course uh, we have added and uh, within the components we have also added sub assembly businesses which are at a little less margins because th- that is kind of a pass through entity where customers ask us to uh, you know add on couple of more components and give us uh, it is a, like a bought out items which are added on to our components and then sold to the customers so that's the reason uh, where we don't get uh, complete uh, 8 to 10% of ebitdas on those kind of pass through things that's why the percentages will look a uh, little bit lesser as compared to this but as far as the components are concerned we enjoy uh, the range bound of 8 to 10% margins sure and sir i had a question on uh, uh, mr jain would request you to kindly come in the queue for follow up questions uh, we have the next question from the line of aditya bhartiya from investec please go ahead uh, hi good morning sir uh, so my first question is uh, on the electronic segment uh wherein you mentioned that uh, we are anticipating the uh, over 50% growth next year uh and within which we have added uh, wearables and wearables as well as telecom we just wanted to understand what uh, proportion of growth is coming from ac business uh, related electronics and how much is coming from uh, telecom and uh, uh, and wearables and wearables and within that uh, would we be getting the benefit of uh, uh, telecom cli scheme Uh, uh uh and and which are the customers that we are working on the telecom side aditya the ac contribution uh, is growing at around about 25 to 30% in that division we uh, uh, successfully onboarded many customers from uh, room air conditioners front both in oem as well as odm category in oem we are uh, assembling the pcbs as per their designs and in odm we are giving our own designed uh, uh, pcb so both are uh, both strategies are moving uh, forward giving us a, a positive growth for the uh, pcb assembly for ac to a tune of 25 to 30% as far as uh, the telecom uh, and uh, uh, wearable and wearable is concerned uh, we are uh, i think that that's pretty much on the growth path uh, these are new customers which we have added new business verticals i believe uh, you know the major chunk of growth will come from all the three factors because not only air conditioners in consumer durable and home appliances we have now onboarded uh, customers for fans customers for microwave refrigerators washing machines and on wearable and wearables uh, we have started smart watch assemblies plus the pcbas for that and in telecom we are doing 5g equipments uh, such as ontis and rrs and dbus so those are the kind of diversified portfolio electronic uh, business has built up and, and who could be the customer sir uh, for for wearable wearable uh, i remember you had earlier in, spoken about uh, we will refrain giving any customer's name because it's a company sensitive information understood understood sir. these are large customers i can only tell that okay sure and uh, the idea is to deal with for follow up question request you kindly come back in the queue Participants are requested to kindly restrict your questions to two per participant. Participants are requested to kindly restrict your questions to two per participant. We have the next question on the line of Sonali Sargamkar from Jeffries India. Please go ahead. So thank you for the opportunity. So my first question is regarding the industry restocking level. What is the kind? Of, what are the trends in restocking that you are looking at? uh after the implementation of the new be norms and what is the current channel inventory that we can talk about plus what is the price hike that we will be taking for the new models and whether it will be margin accretive or not well as far as the price hike is concerned all of the brands have already in uh, taken the price hikes in the market you would have seen that the air conditioners prices were increased 
have already got increased uh, by 1200 to 1300 rupees because of the B table change. And uh, uh, as far as the inventory levels are concerned, uh, you know, industry was quite uh, optimistic for quarter three, but which ended up to be a very, very muted quarter uh, for industry. October and November, hardly any sales. And then uh, mid of December onward, we saw the sales coming up for finished goods uh, room AC and both primary and secondary. Inventory levels uh, is very, it, it is completely at a varied level with some of the brands uh, sitting still at a very high inventory levels, but some of the brands are uh, not having uh, that inventory and their sales is moving pretty well. So it's a, uh, uh, there's no thumb rule which everybody is following. Uh, it's everybody's at a different level on the inventory side. Understand. So my second question is, is regarding what is your uh, net debt level as of December? versus September and also about the capex but just wanted to clarify the 625 to 650 crores you are expecting in FI 23 right so what about your expectations in 24? Uh, so uh, on the capex front uh, Sunali we uh, we will be doing about 625 to 650 this year but next year our capex is going to be around 250 to 275 crore maximum. Uh, as far as net debt levels are concerned, today we are sitting at about 900 crores of net debt level, whereas we expect to close uh, the financial year, uh, current financial year, in approximately 450 to 500 range. Okay, so how will you pay down that debt, sir? I mean, is, is there a seasonality to that? Or, uh, yeah, because that's basically just one because quarter. the season starts and, uh, you know, we start getting uh, our uh, uh, payments from customers. Right now, you know, because of uh, the inventory built up, uh, the debt looks high. Got it. And uh, this uh, paper. Mr. Gaunkar, we're going to kindly come in back in the queue for follow up questions. We have the next question from the line of Nitin Dharmavat from Aurum Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so you mentioned about you know telecom sector and some 5G you know equipment manufacturing. So uh, can you elaborate that? And if we have done any foreign collaboration for that, that is one first question. Second question is, what is the peak revenue that uh, we are anticipating uh, with the current capacities that we are having? So in the telecom sector, uh, we have not done any joint venture or uh, transfer of technologies. This is a pure. Uh, OEM play which we are uh, offering because we are a, uh, a diversified PCB assembly. In telecom, you normally use multi-layered PCB uh, PCB assemblies, and we have that capabilities. Uh, and uh, because of our geographical presence in India, we got this order because the customer wants in uh, both South India and North India. And uh, currently, we have. Uh, started with uh, the equipment such as BBU and RRH and uh, you know some antennas plus VOND uh, devices. So these are all used in the uh, 5G equipment uh, which is basically delivered by other big companies. As far as the capacity of revenue is concerned, uh, all the divisions are at different capacities. Uh, today if we see about the uh, gross block, I think we can uh, easily go to five times of the gross block of what we have today as a peak uh, kind of a revenue base. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. We have the next question on the line of Anirudha Joshi from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Sir, uh, on uh, Ever and Ilgin, the margins are uh, far lower than the PCBA players that we uh, see which are recently listed or others in the market. So at current uh, level of EBITDA margin of around 4 or percent and the working capital, do you see these businesses generating return ratios in excess of cost of capital? And um, uh, when do we see the margins improving in this? Secondly, uh, can you also uh, elaborate a bit more on the export strategy which you had spoken in earlier con call also and any update on that? And lastly, uh, the tax rate is higher than 25.5% in nine months. So what should be the guidance for tax rate for FR23 as well as FR24? Yeah, thanks. The so tax rate is basically because of the MAC. I think I'll leave that question for Subhi to answer and then I'll answer your other two questions. Yeah, hi. Uh, so as you know that uh, earlier it was also discussed that we have a MAC credit available because of which we are not moving to the new tax regime, which is at 25.17%. So 
uh, actual cash tax outflow for the umber interest on standalone i'm talking is around 17% balance will be utilized through the net and once we utilize the net credit which is to the tune of 35 to 40 crore then we'll go to the uh, 25% uh, tax rate and uh, now answering your uh, margins on the ilgin and ever uh, subsidies uh, we are uh, um uh, in the range of 4 4.5% um, businesses we have businesses in this division from 3% to about 6.5% division uh, largely if you see uh, the consumer durable and smart durable and wearables are in this range only uh, even uh, if the peers would be comparable uh, auto and uh, industrial and defense is at different level which we are not into right now so going forward in a long term strategy yes we do have plans to enter into those segments which will help us to increase our margins but however even at the lower margins of 4.5% or the level where we are the return on capital employed of this division is uh, above uh, close to about 23% right now and it will enhance going forward because the capex requirement is not more but whereas we are expecting a growth of more than 50% in this division Uh, as far as the export strategy is concerned uh, we have two strong export strategy one is on the components and second is for the finished goods uh, on components as i highlighted during my call that uh, we are expecting in the motor division which is already exporting right now we expect the export uh, business to grow by 30 to 40% uh, by fy24 and for the uh, finished goods we are uh, at the stage of almost approvals getting approvals from some customers first milestone was to get the products ready for those geographies second was to to get the clearance of the be norms because this is a regulated product by every country so those two milestones in three uh, basically finished good category we have approved uh, we have uh, received and now we are having uh, we are endeavoring our foot in the door strategy uh, these customers have been buying from you know almost about 25 30 years from uh, china and thailand so first of all we we must have the foot in the door with small volumes which we expect uh, to demonstrate by fy24 and then the gradual share of business will start happening from fy25 onwards okay thank you thank you sir thank you we have the next question from the line of sandeep tulsian from gm financial please go ahead yeah good morning uh so my first question is regarding all these new investments that we have done in the new capacities uh what is the broader uh capacity or the average utilization at which we are operating uh probably where do you expect to end fy23 and where do you expect this capacity utilization to get ramped up uh by fy24 well the new plants are just begun so the capacity utilization will be somewhere in the tune of uh, 25 to 50% only and uh, by next year we should uh, we should have about 50% of capacity utilization in these new plants on uh, what uh, so okay. all all the divisions are up, uh, at a different capacity utilization levels uh, so i think looking at the complete balance sheet of capacity utilization will not be a right approach because uh, electronics is at different capacity utilization motor is at different in motors case if i speak we are uh, sitting at uh, right now 50% of capacity utilization in fy24 we have just begin we have just shifted the motor plant to a new factory so we have uh, decent capacities there uh, in sidwal uh, we are sitting at a capacity utilization of almost 65 to 70% uh, and uh, in room ac and components as we have just begin the new plants are at 25 to 30% the old plants are running at 75 to 80% got it uh second question is uh, sir bookkeeping if you could also share the gross debt number at the end of 3q uh, and also the forex loss and uh, esop number if any in 3q that you have provided yeah hi so uh, gross debt uh, as in 35 december is 1350 crores mm-hmm. total is of expenses in the nine months uh, is uh, 19.9 crores and there is a forex loss uh, which largely happened in the quarter one but overall it is 32 crores in the nine months at good level 
and he's up in 3Q or how much? He's up in the 3Q is uh, 7.3 crores. Got it. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Madhav Marda from Fidelity International. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Good morning. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, just wanted to understand, uh, given we've added a lot of capacity uh, recently, what is it fair to say that there is a lot of operating leverage from fixed cost uh, uh, on in the business system payout in the next uh, two to three years? Because 650 crores for our business is a very, very large capex which we've incurred. So just wanted to understand how that can play out and how much can we expect to ramp up the new capacity to uh, seek utilization levels? Well, Madhav, you are right because uh, you know we don't need to do uh, such large capex again. Uh, you know that's the reason why we are guiding that next year it's going to be in the range of 250 to 275 crores only. Uh, and uh, as 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 mentioned, that capacity utilization of the new plants are only at 25, 30 percent. So definitely the operational leverage. Uh, uh, will come, uh, you know, going forward, and you will see the return on capital employed, uh, um, you know, going up um, because of that uh, operation leverage. Okay, okay. And the ESOP expenses, when does that start tapering off? Uh, is that FY24 or 25? Um, sorry, come again, please, Madhu. Uh, the the ESOP expense uh, which we are incurring, does that start going down from FY24 itself or FY26 that we go away? No, no, it will going down from uh, FI24 itself as well. Okay. okay. So, uh, its off expenses always in the first year it's largest, then it's uh, fallen down every year in uh, uh, next four years. Got it. And did I hear right? Uh, Mr. Martha would agree to kindly come back in queue for follow up questions. We have the next question from the line of Kaur from ICC Prudential. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, just want to understand, uh, 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 first of all, on the standalone side, our gross margin and EBITDA margin. So on steady state basis, what kind of probability should we expect? And uh, uh, does it, does it? Uh, I mean, uh, it in, de depends on our price hikes or uh, with lower quality prices, we should be able to get those steady state margins. That is my first question. We'll see price hike as uh, explained in earlier quarters also we have a price variation clause applicability with uh, all customers so it happens with the quarterly lag now like in q3 also we took a price hike but uh, uh, you know since the industry was muted so there was hardly any numbers uh, on on the uh, complete components as well as uh, this so uh, the the range of uh, you know uh, uh, complete in percentage terms, uh, you know, it's very difficult to tell because we are now catering to various components which have various range of uh, EBITDA margins. The finished goods uh, range is very different and the sub-assembly range is very different. So it will be very difficult to predict what customer wants from us. You know, they, they, they keep on changing their strategies from finished goods to components to sub-assemblies or all the three together or just one of them. So it will be very difficult to say what number in the percentage term is concerned. As guided earlier, I would like to guide again that, uh, you know, uh, looking into our balance sheet on the percentage terms uh, is not the appropriate way because of the diversified business verticals we have from 4% to 20% plus uh, with the margin businesses. I think uh, what we would like to guide again uh, in this call is that uh, we will try to uh, deliver a range bound of 30% plus absolute data number going forward. And that will be higher than your sales growth. Basically, your uh, uh, your beta growth will be faster than sales growth with operating leverage, lot of capex and lot of opex already in the numbers. Yeah, it will depend on uh, what kind of revenue we get uh, in case electronics uh, starts moving very, uh, you know, on a high trajectory of 100% growth kind of a thing, then definitely this will, this statement is not correct. But in case it remains in the 25-30% range, yes, then the percentage of the bid and PAT will outnumber the uh, And the second question you have par partially answered, but the similar guidance remains for FR24 as well? 
Yes, uh, I think uh, similarly, uh, similar guidelines for FY24 and 25 that will maintain that absolute growth of EBITDA. Okay, thanks a lot. I will get back in the queue. All the best. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Rakesh Vadwani from Monarch AIF. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I have one question. Uh, uh, first question is regarding uh, component supply or supply chain because there were some articles because of the COVID crisis in China. The supply, the factories have been shut down. So just want to understand as a comparator or other component suppliers coming. <coughs> and, second, and second thing, uh, just wanted to under, uh, you confirm, uh, you said 2822 crore is a nine-month sales from RAC and components. So can you please just confirm the amount for the components and RAC? That will be great. Thank you. So out of uh, 2822, 1137 is components, uh, which is your uh, uh, components supply to all the customers we have on the on the supply chain uh, on due to the covid in china what we did is we uh, pre-planned uh, the shipments from china uh, because of not that we knew that covid is coming but because of the chinese new year and that helped us uh, to navigate out of the situation so we were not affected because of covid situation in china but now it everything is opening up so uh, things are very streamlined right now Okay, sir. That was very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question on the line of Praveen Sahai from Prabhudas Liyadar. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for taking my question. So, uh, sir, my question first related to the motor. Uh, as you had guided, there is order from uh, BLDC motor and also the large order for export. Is that uh, uh, going to be a similar margin in that trajectory, uh, what we are reporting in these uh, orders? And the second question is related to Sidwal. For this quarter, had seen a, a deterioration in the margin. Uh, what's the reason for that? So in motors, uh, basically export is a similar margin to domestic uh, manufacturing, but BLDC category is a slightly lesser margin because of this product continues to be in the pressure uh, due to the China supply chain. Uh, Chinese are still uh, throwing it at a very cost uh, price, but yes, moving forward as the scale comes in this category, we will bring this, uh, you know, we expect that margins can be improved uh, for this. But overall, uh, PICL is doing well. Well, uh, PICL has already demonstrated its trajectory from uh, you know five percent of Bida company three years back to almost uh, ten to twelve percent right, right now. Uh, and uh, as far as the Sidwal quarter three margins are concerned, that is purely because of the um, product mix and uh, and uh, some delay in supply uh, where we got some LD clauses uh, uh, applicable. But um, if you see on the nine months case. I think uh, we are maintaining the, the same kind of margin of 21% or uh, as far as the full year is concerned. I think we expect that FK23 uh, will close by in the, the same range as nine months number, percentage change. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question on the line of Abhishek Ghosh from DSCP Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, so thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, in terms of uh, Sidwal, what will be your overall market share? And given that uh, there's so much of happening around railways, metros, and other things, how do you expect the, you know, overall this business to be next uh, two to three years? Any thoughts, sir? Abhishek, uh, this business is uh, uh, pretty much on a run. decent growth trajectory because of the complete infrastructure and upgradation push and urbanization of transportation which is required by Ministry of Urban Development. Uh, I think uh, uh, if, you, if you talk about the uh, share of business in railways, uh, HVAC systems we will be almost about 50%. In metros uh, in India, uh, we will be about 60% uh, share of business holder uh, for the all metros which we are catering to right now. Uh, as far as uh, other categories are concerned, buses we are very less. But in bus, we still need to ramp up our share of business we will be at about close to about five or six percent at the moment uh, whereas in defense and uh, precision air conditioning i think that we that is where we enjoy 
close to about 60 to 70 percent of the market share. Okay, thanks. But so my second question is: In this current quarter, I have seen uh, you know while Sejwal margins have been weaker, but both in PSEL and in uh, you know your electronics part of it, you have seen healthy margin improvement. Are those sustainable? How should we look at it? And for the PCB part of it, will you also look at you know the industrial and the defense part of it? Will you kind of look at because since you have the basic capabilities, will you look to also diversify into that segment? These are my only questions. Well, we keep on diversifying. Uh, you know, now since the divisional CEOs uh, are navigating their divisions into growth trajectories, so definitely they have the diversification plans already. But these kind of businesses of uh, defense uh, and uh, railways kind of applications, it takes time to onboard customers and get the approval. So it's a these are high uh, entry barrier businesses. Uh, yes, we will definitely try to attempt, uh, but uh, that will be in the um, basically long term, uh, not not on the short term basis. As far as short term is concerned, uh, and efficiency at which we are going, we expect that we maintain that. Ladies and gentlemen, the line for Mr. Goel has disconnected. Please stay connected as we connect the management. You're reconnected. You may go ahead. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, as far as uh, you know, maintainability of the margins are concerned, uh, um, you know, in the percentage terms, uh, you know, it is very difficult to guide anything on the percentages. But again, I would like to guide that on the control basis, uh, we will maintain what we have guided. So that's that's the guidance we want to give on in each and every division. Since we are now moving into a very diversified portfolio, it is very difficult to predict. What kind of percentages we will be able to uh, demonstrate? Yes, though the endeavor is to grow the percentage of margins, but when you sit in the front of a customer, uh, if you know sometimes you start on a low margins and then you increase on a towards the higher trajectory, you have to take these calls. So percentages of each, each division will continue to vary uh, from quarter to quarter, but on a control basis, uh, on a yearly basis, we will maintain what we have guided. Okay, so thank you so much. Wish you all the best. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Sandeep Dixit from Urja Partners. Please go ahead. Hey, thanks, Sutan. Um, just coming to your margins, uh, your ESOP costs, why do you think they are one off? This is part of your operating expense, no? So, yeah, it's part of our trading expense, but it's a non-cash item. And this is one of because we are not very uh, regular in giving the ESOPs. It is first time, uh, two times only we have given the ESOPs. And that will, uh, the impact of the same will be over in next two to three years' time. So that my is second a, question is, yeah. My second question is, uh, the, uh, you have mentioned that uh, raw material costs have gone up by 1.5%. Right. And, uh, and that's the primary reason for the uh, contraction in margins. When can we expect it to sort of come back to the six, seven percent kind of range? So, like uh, Mr. Jaspreet sir has said, that we are not looking the margins in the percentage terms. We are largely focused on that how we can improve our margins in the absolute terms on each component and each uh, product. So, uh, if there's a part of a product is there, so percentage terms uh, varies a lot. So that is why we focus on that, how we can get the better margin absolute amount. So I should focus on that 30% growth in EBITDA on an absolute number rather than the margin. Am I right? right. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello? Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Rona Gwara from AUM Fund Advisors. Please go ahead. Hello? Hello, am I audible? Yes, we can yes, hear you. Yeah. 
so what was the operating cash flow in the first 9 months and uh, i want to know the split uh, in terms of uh, term debt and working capital debt of our 1300 crore of gross debt so in the uh, gross debt the term debt is around 600 crore don't like the exact number but it's around 600 crore on the term debt and uh, what was the other question uh, operating cash flow for the first 9 months on for the q3 Mm, just a sec. Just give me one minute. Uh, I'll give you that number in some time. Uh, you can uh, continue with the other question. Just give me one minute. I'll just answer this question. Okay. Uh, so my second question is, uh, whenever we negotiate with a customer, you said that it's okay for us to start with lower margins and then inch it up while the business is growing. Uh, so what is the baseline ROCI or uh, return ratios that we look for when we negotiate with a customer? Well, it's a simple uh, fundamental, uh, you know, uh, principle that uh, in case we are unable to. Get our money back in uh, four years. We don't go ahead. That's the fundamental base. Um, Percentage doesn't matter. Uh, sometimes you have to take a strategy calls with your customers, and sometimes you have to support them as the, the long-term, uh, you know, association. And uh, sometimes they support you. So it's it's just like once you are a strategic partner to any customer, uh, you have to move hand in hand with their uh, uh, situation. and we need to take those calls but largely uh, whenever we invest um, even uh, one rupee is invested if uh, any return is coming beyond 4 to 5 years range we don't invest okay sir thank you okay. thank you next one operating cash is uh, 150 crore including other income okay thank you We have the next question on the line of Akash Zaveri from Perpetual Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Good morning, and uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my first question is with regard to BLDC for fans. Uh, so, how big is the market? Um, how do you see the penetration, and who are we competing against, and what would be the margins like? Uh, we are not uh, delivering products for BLDC for fans. What we are doing is we are doing uh, basically. um uh, ptbas for uh, bldc fans uh, whereas uh, in the bldc motors uh, we are we created these products uh, developed these products for uh, heating ventilation air conditioning applications so we started with uh, uh, bldc for uh, inverter splits and uh, windows as well as uh, for vrv applications Okay, thank you so much. And um, so, how are the existing motor manufacturers, uh, you know, not being able to compete? Well, that's very difficult question to ask. I mean, to answer on their front. But I think uh, we are very focused in heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and uh, primarily because of our the R and D capabilities as well as uh, the complete Pan India presence which we have uh, and the customer base which we have. Uh, Uh, this is a product which is it's a functional component and in functional components the final products uh, performance depends on the functionality of such kind of a components the validation assessments are pretty long so no customer will give you approval without uh, validating your product for at least 2 to 3 seasons that is the first leg of entry barrier and second is they do not give you 100% share of business on day 1 uh they practically you know gradually grow you from 5% then to 20% then to 30% so it's a trajectory of 5 to 6 years with each and every customer which we have traveled understand and um, you mentioned about the export the question should kindly come in the queue for follow up question yeah sure sorry i'll come back thank you we have the next question from the line of dhananjay babrodia from ask investments please go ahead Mr. Dhananjay, can you hear us? Me? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Your voice is a bit low. Can you kindly come on the handset mode? Yeah. Is this better? Yes. Please go ahead. Uh, so, with more of the players now with uh, PLI, uh, ben- uh, with uh, applying for PLI, with their capacity is going to come on this year uh, for components, would that have any impact on our component business? Question one. 
So we haven't seen. Uh, I mean, uh, the PLI basically was for only components. PLI was not for yes. any food. So yes. any any applicant who has applied, uh, all uh, all of them are uh, putting up components. Yes. So a lot of awards uh, uh, and contracts which uh, you all are witnessing right now in the revenue stream of uh, consolidated part. So, but sir, the question is, we're not seeing anything from the other competitors yet in terms because their factories have not started yet operationized. No, first of no, all, that. let us see. I mean, you know, the large uh, PLI players are the brands. Yes. Uh, so they are they are anyway putting up like uh, if you talk about Blue Star, their factory is ready. They they've already started production. They will have started production. Then uh, Daikin factory is almost ready. Uh, they will be starting production soon. Uh, you know, Volta, Pantanagar has already started. Uh, Chennai, they will start very, uh, by next year. So um, uh, this shift has already happened. Uh, and, uh, you know, we are beneficiaries of this shift because of our strategies of being into components and finished goods in both the categories. Uh, so <clears throat> I think uh, probably the reason why we have benefited is because of our Pan India plus the wide era of 70% of bill of material which we can address. You know, uh, some of the companies have gone for high backward integration. Some of the companies have chosen not to go for high backward integration. So depending on their level of backward integration, we have entered into the component strategy with them. Okay. And uh, so what would be your guidance for next year? Uh, Mr. Bukhari, I kindly request to kindly come in, for, in the queue for follow-up questions. Okay. Well, and I'll answer that question. Uh, you know, our guidance, as uh, um, I mentioned on the call, is that we will try to maintain our share of business of the manufacturing footprint of room AC industry to a tune of 26 to 28%. Okay, sure. Thank you. We have the next question on the line of Dhruv Jain from Ambed Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you, my follow up. Uh, I had one question, actually, two related to CAPEX and fixed assets. So one is that I think there has been a slight increase in your FY24 CAPEX guidance. So uh, if you could just let us know what's uh, changed there. And uh, on the fixed asset part also, we've seen in the last two quarters or so, uh, you're booking an item uh, called I mean, loss on sale of fixed assets. So uh, uh, if you could just throw some light, you know, what's that? I know it's a very small number, but if you could just let us know, that would be great. Thanks. So this is normally like whatever uh, assets are being uh, written off and not usable and they are ask, uh, looking uh, asking for a more maintenance. So that we have sold off. So that is why there is a small amount of uh, asset written off. Otherwise, there is no big asset which is being sold off. Answer uh, about uh, increasing your I think earlier I think somewhere Mr. Jain, we are unable to hear you very clearly. You request to go off the speakerphone. And also, you could, uh, let us know about the increase in CAPEX. I think the earlier guidance for XI24 was about 200 odd crores. Uh, so now you're talking about 250 to 275. So we, we, uh, I don't remember that we've given just 200 crores of CAPEX because of 23 plants and plus we are uh, endeavor to continue our R&D initiatives. Uh, and some new opportunities which are uh, uh, with our subsidiaries, not number, but uh, subsidiaries are having very good uh, opportunities. That's the reason why we are increasing this uh, guidance. I mean, if we have given uh, on 200, but I, I think I remember uh, giving this 225 to 250 crore of a, of a guidance. And so, uh, so the ROC guidance doesn't change, right? I think it means. Yeah, that, that doesn't change. So that the RAC is definitely we are we are now moving in tandem to the industry. So if we if we maintain our 26 to 28 percent share in the manufacturing footprint, I think that's a pretty decent uh, market share to have, uh, whether it be finished good or whether be compound. So I was talking about uh, the return on capital. Kindly come in the follow up uh, in the queue for follow up questions. We have the next question on the line of Sandeep Tulsiyan from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, I have a couple of uh, follow-up questions. Uh, first thing you mentioned on the margin uh, that, of course, uh, finished goods as a share is coming down because brands are doing assembly in-house. Uh, but at the same time, we have picked up some sub-assembly business, which is, again, a uh, lower margin uh, business for us. So broadly, if you could uh, categorize in terms of your percentage of sales, 
uh, how this mix was between Finnish goods components, and I'm assuming sub assemblies was very low in the past, and how this is changed and going to uh, pan out. Uh, probably uh, where you are currently, if you can give us some broader sense to understand the margin. Well, you see, uh, when when we got listed in 2018, we were close to about 80, 85 percent banking on remittances, uh, and the revenue base at that time was 2100. Uh, today, uh, revenue base has um, you know almost tripled, and uh, we the RIT banking will come has come down to 40 percent. So, um, other 60 percent is the businesses of uh, other divisions plus the component businesses. And um, it's a diversified portfolio. Uh, it's very difficult to say how in future will it be panning out. You never know the customer shifts or strategies sometimes. If outsourcing starts again, uh, you know, the, the percentage will go up. But as far as two, three years are concerned, we, we see the horizon that uh, RAC banking will be in a tune of 35 to 40% in the balance sheet. That will be all components and sub assemblies plus other uh, divisions. So that, that was uh, to more to understand between the difference between sub assemblies and components because sub assemblies is essentially what is pulling down the margins, right? No, see, uh, uh, let us understand first that uh, uh, you know sub assemblies uh, are, are basically a component and then added the, uh, on top of it, we add some bought out items. The 100% right. business is not sub assembly, so we have uh, businesses only for pure components uh, sale also, which is uh, at a higher margins. And when 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 you are sitting with a customer, you, you can't say no if we want to put up certain three or four more components on it and give it uh, supply to them on just in time basis, and also uh, maintain the inventory levels plus uh, deliver them the complete kit solutions. You know, so that is a very added advantage to you that uh, by having that sub assemblies, whether it is at Lower margins, uh, you know, you are not putting any any capex for that. There is hardly, and in fact, you earn out of that complete uh, doing the sub assembly work. So we are not bothered about that uh, lower margin percentage or something like that. I think that's why I'm repeating again and again. In past also, I would like to repeat it this time again that please don't look at balance sheet towards percentages of margins. Percentage of margin are function of product mix, component mix, finished goods. Uh, sub assemblies, everything will keep on changing uh, from quarter to quarter. It's very difficult to predict any or forecast any kind of uh, trend here because it's all customer driven. And it is also function of commodity and currencies. If commodities go up, the percentages will look down. So we would like to guide that uh, uh, we will maintain that uh, to, you know 30% plus a bit down range for next two to three years' time on the absolute number growth. Thank you. That was the last question. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Tesbir Singh for closing comments. Thank you, everyone, for joining on the call. I hope uh, we have been able to address your queries well. For any further information, kindly get in touch with Manish or Strategic Growth Advisor or Investor Relations Advisors. Thank you very much, and have a good day. Thank you, sir. On behalf of Umber Enterprises Limited. That concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.